This is nationwide reaching you on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority. I am Lami Ali. President Mohamed Wari is back in Abuja after a four-day state visit to the Kingdom of Spain. State House correspondent Adam Sambu reports that the president was received on arrival at the Namdi Azikiwe International Airport by the Minister of the FCT, Mohamed Musabello, Inspector General of Police, Usman Al Ali Baba, Director General, Department of State Services, Yusuf Magaji Bichi, and other senior government officials. The Special Advisor to the President on Media and Publicity, Femi Adishino, described the President's visit on the invitation of President Pedro Sanchez as highly successful and hugely rewarding for Nigeria. It's a trip that is worth its weight in gold. Being with our president at this kind of trip shows us the esteem with which the rest of the world holds President Muhammad Uwari. The fact that the invitation to visit came from the president of uh, Spain in the first instance was very significant. And when he got there, the reception by the king and by President Sanchez, it was something that will elicit national pride in every Nigerian. It was a very good trip. Of course, you know that this kind of trip will continue to resonate. But in the immediate, you have all those memorandum of understanding already signed with Spain on repatriation of convicted people, on science and technology, on tourism, on dif different kinds of areas of endeavor. Then there was the business meeting between Spain and Nigeria. Very, very good. I can imagine that a lot of good returns will come from that uh, business meeting because the president gave the keynote address and he unfolded what Nigeria had to offer. And those investors were at hand and Nigerian businesses were also there. It's a landmark. Very, very important for our country. Now, new strategy for ensuring objectives of the World Summit on the Information Society Action Lines has been unveiled at the ongoing summit in Geneva, Switzerland. The chairman, Professor Isa Ali Pantami, says his vision is to shift focus from summit events to carrying out set of activities throughout the year. This, he believes, will enhance stakeholders' ability to achieve the objectives of the WSIS action lines using the presented reports of the high-level tracks as baseline and launchpad for year-long activities. Professor Pantami emphasizes that the WSIS action lines are crucial for achieving sustainable development goals. Therefore, it is important to continue to align the process with the with the 2030 agenda for sustainable development the Federal High Court sitting in Abuja has adjourned to August 29, 2022 to deliver judgment in the suit filed by the Office of the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice seeking to extradite the suspended Deputy Commissioner of Police, Abakari, to the United States of America to face criminal charges. Olabodi Ariwa reports that the court gave the order after both applicants and respondents in the matter have adopted their written addresses. Abba Kerry and six others are already facing counts in another suit, burdening on their alleged involvement in tampering with evidence, drug peddling, and money laundering. In this instance, however, Abba Kerry, the suspended Deputy Commissioner of Police, is facing extradition to the United States of America under the Extradition Act Modification Order of 2014. This is to enable him 
answer to allegations of purportedly colluding with an internet foster, Ramon Abbas, also known as Osh Poppy. Why the federal government submits that Abakari has a case to answer, the respondent submits that the Inspector General's office and Interpol were duly kept abreast of the sting operation during which they had interactions with Osh Poppy to earn his trust so as to arrest him. The United States authorities, however, believe that Abakari is criminally liable, judging from the messages found on Abbas Ramon's phone. We wrote two letters, one in January 2020, another one in March 2020. And those letters were not denied. In April 2021 was when the U.S. government now saw those charts. Without asking about Kiari, they are saying those charts presupposes that he is a conspirator with Osh Popish. A bail application recently filed by the applicant respondent, who is Abakiari, was denied by the courts. In Abuja Labodarewa, NTA News. And in other news, the High Court of the Federal Capital Territory, Wusei, has remanded Peter Mwachuku, husband of the late gospel singer Usinachi, in the Kujay Correctional Facility pending the hearing and determination of the homicide-related suit instituted against him by the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice. The presiding judge, Justice Ngozi Mosunghime, gave the order on Friday after the, def dependent, the defendants pleaded not guilty to 23 counts charged bordering on domestic violence and homicide. Justice Ngosuhime ordered that the defendants be remanded at the Kujie Correctional Facility while trial was adjourned to June 16th and June 17th, 2022. Justice Ngosuhime equally ordered accelerated hearing of the matter. Wajuku's wife died on April 8th and many of her colleagues had accused her husband of subjecting the deceased to domestic violence suspiciously leading to her death. To reduce youth unemployment across the nation, the federal government through the National Directorate of Employment has given out grants for skills development and entrepreneurial ventures. The NDE is mandated to monitor the trained and equipped beneficiaries in Delta State. Unyinyi Joshua Ifanyi reports that the entrepreneurial projects cover agricultural businesses, sales of household items, as well as fashion design. This is the business premises of Emanuela Clinton, the chief executive officer of Nuela Clinton Farms with three staff. She commenced her poultry business with 100 birds and 500,000 Naira grants from National Directorate of Employment after receiving Rural Agricultural Development Training Scheme. She is no longer keen on seeking white-collar job and is ready to train others. If you know what you want in life, you go to NDE, they will give you direction. If I wasn't a poultry farmer, I would not have been in contact with NDE. My getting in contact with them, I got the adequate training I needed. And at the end of the day, my business has been sustained. Same describes the success story of Azuka Agbada of Latos Farms, who also received a grant of 100,000 Naira after his training with NDE. He is presently reaping the benefit of the program. Rachel Lewis, a fashion designer, Joan Isioma Madwe Media, a physically challenged hairdresser, and Enwebuna Steven, skilled in computer training and maintenance, have all been impacted by the NDE project. The federal government grant has also uplifted Austin Asulime, a retiree who deals on kitchen utensils and had received Mature People's Program from NTE. It is important to attempt to fight mass unemployment. It is equally important to assess whether you are succeeding in the fight, whether you are succeeding in the initiatives that you have uh, deployed to address mass unemployment. Onyinye Joshua Ifai, NTA News. The Directorate of Employment has also embarked on monitoring of progress made by some of those who have acquired skills through the Directorate in the Federal Capital Territory. 
The idea is to ensure that those that benefited make use of the skills by contributing to the society. Omolafe Gabriel ventured into fishery after he graduated from the university without a white collar job. In 2015, his farming project got a boost of 500,000 naira from the National Directorate of Employment. Here is his success story. The money I got from ND really helped me. That's 500,000. Three years ago, that's 2019. And a lot of people have been coming here. By the time they enter into the farm and see what is going on, they develop interest. Eunice Obiago is also another beneficiary of the NDE. Today, she is a professional in the confectionery business. I'm still waiting for a job. I've not gotten a graduate. But with this now, I'm now empowered. And I can also bring in more people and empower them for the job. I'm one of the beneficiary of ND, direct, National Directive of Employment. I've been with them over 10 years. I have trained over 5,000 students. 5 million naira, And um, that was what we received. And um, we were able to add to um, whatever we, that we had then. So uh, that has led to where we are now. We are not in town for all. What one government does is it does what it can do within its resources and then paves the way for others to also imitate and lend their support, the private sector, the good Samaritans have mentioned it. Omola, Fair Gabriel and Eunice Obiagu are just two of the many citizens that have benefited from the many programs of the directorate. President Mahmoud Buhari sends warm felicitations to his classmates at the military training school in 1962, Juventus Jijoke Ujuku, as he turns 80. The president recalls the grueling drills and trainings with the then cadet officer in training and how they eventually got commissioned as officers of the Nigerian army. President Buhari salutes 60 years of relationship with the former House of Representatives member who represented the Demili Federal Constituency in the Second Republic and wishes him longer days in good health and greater service to God and humanity. The president equally lost the All Progressives Congress stalwart for his abiding faith in Nigeria, pledging that the country will realize her vast potentials despite all odds. Adeola is in Lagos with more stories on Nationwide. It's over to you, Deola. Thank you, Lami. The Federal Operations Unit Zone A of the Nigeria Customs Service has intercepted close to 10,000 bags of foreign rice, which is an equivalent of 16 truckloads within the month of May. The seizure is part of various attempts by smugglers to circumvent extant law on importation in which 14 suspects were arrested. Michael Olaleye reports. The changing tide of the weather is infusing new tactics in smugglers who could no longer rely on their major means of conveyance like the motorcycles to ferry produce to the hinterland. The waterways now hold sway and after three days of surveillance at Ado Duere by officers of the Federal Operations Unit Zone A, sizable number of these 9,917 bags of rice were intercepted through aggressive push in partnership with the Western Marine Command. Although no arrest was made, but the customs was able to seize five bulls and intercept the consignment in question. The secret behind the tactics employed by smugglers are endless, but the customs guided by intelligence sharing is solving the puzzle. Look at the two Dangote trucks you are seeing here. There's a particular one that sand was mixed with rice. Now you will now think that maybe the Dangote is taking sand somewhere. The same manner of concealment was adopted in the case of sizable liters 
out of the close to 42,000 liters of petrol intercepted. But the major worry to the Federal Operations Unit Zone A of the Customs Service is that some intercepted along the waterways in Badagri were concealed in sacks with each containing 100 liters. The discovery of a tire colony is also heart rendering because the location did not just contain unspecified number of used tires but praised like an industry with workers on site with their families. This container we have here, we will take this container to the office, trace the ownership from there, we'll get to know the linkage with here. Within the month of May, the Federal Operations Unit Zone A of the Nigeria Customs Service did not just raise demand notices in the sum of 64 million naira, but the duty paid value of total seizure was put at more than 818 million naira. In Lagos, Michael Olaleye, NT News. Still talking about arrest of suspects? Between April 2021 till date, not less than 42,000 suspects have been arrested and over 4,000 arms recovered from them. The first public relations officer, Muiwa Dejobi, stated this during an interactive session with Annie Daniels in Lagos. Scenarios like these ones have almost become a monthly affair. Criminal suspects engaged in illegal possession of arms and ammunition. Aware of the danger embedded in this act, first public relations officer Olumi Wadejobi says the Nigerian police employed strategies like the ICT and intelligence-based policing systems, as well as robust community partnership system aimed at mopping the arms and punishing offenders. Whatever category of arms, even the most loading firearms that is common that we use in gaming in the locally, our forefathers always use the carry at will, is prohibited. And every Nigeria knows that to bear arms is, is, is a crime. But now you see because of proliferation of firearms, everybody is almost having uh, arms with him, or ammunition, uh, and these have been acquired illegally, and they possess them illegally, they use them illegally. Not yet Uhuru, the fourth PRO says the Nigerian police is forming a synergy with other security agencies to ensure criminals do not have a safe haven in any part of the country. We hope to, to tackle this, um, these ugly incidences, uh, these ideologies of criminals uh, doing all sorts of things to just cause unnecessary pandemonium in the, in the country across the board. So we are, we are up to that task. We are form, forming a very strong synergy with other security agencies, including members of the public. Criminally minded individuals are advised to have a rethink or be ready to face the music because there won't be a hiding place for them. In Lagos, Annie Daniels, NTA News. We're done from Lagos for now, but do not forget to follow this news broadcast live on our website at nta.ng slash all life and on all our other social media handles displayed on your screen for update. Nationwide will continue after this time out with Salamatu in Kaduna. To stay with us. <laughs> Well, stay in tune and glad to have you join us here in Kaduna on Nationwide. Kaduna State Government has inaugurated uh, drones for drug distribution to hard to reach communities. Umar Ajengi takes a look at this initiative and how it will benefit rural dwellers. The report. The facility has the capacity to accommodate hundreds of healthcare products, which include drugs, and COVID-19 vaccines. And this particular distribution center has the capacity of serving about 500 facilities cut across 14 local governments. The drone is expected to cover 46,000 kilometers and will serve 8 million people. This is a call center where facilities in Kaduna State can place their orders for an emergency situation, particularly in PHS rural communities where the patients need very, very urgent drug. The next step is to establish three centers in the three senatorial venues in Kaduna, Umarajingi, NTA News. Away from Kaduna.
Kano state government has concluded plans to engage 5,000 youths with the establishment of 20 large-scale commercial fodder production farms through its agro-pastoral development project. Abdullahi Mustafa report. Among Kano state government's initiatives to stimulate the growth of agribusiness and livestock production is the development of grazing areas to create conducive atmosphere for pastoralists. This involves provision of basic infrastructure and establishment of new collection centers with a view to minimizing problems associated with migratory livestock keeping. Another major is the planned establishment of large-scale commercial fodder farms in 20 locations across the state. We are going to have this all the areas uh, based on uh, to carry out the suitability test of the soil and in order to determine which type of fodder can be uh, produced in this area. We have some examples, which is a typical example is gamma grass. It can be used both for dairy and beef production, while labor grass is mainly for dairy production. May I address no share? This interactive session was convened to educate stakeholders on the prospects and what? procedures for the initiative being implemented by the Kanosri Agro Pastoral Development Project. 50 hectares of land will be allocated in each of the 20 locations. In addition to the large scale commercial fodder production, 5,000 youth are to be engaged and supported on similar program. Well, we are going to support them with one hectare each. So you see, if you multiply uh, uh, 25 metric tons by 5,000 hectares, it's a huge tonnage of food. Set aside under the pilot project. In Kano, Abdullah Mustafa, NT News. And Abdullah Mustafa's reports completes our package from Kaduna is back to Lami Ali in Abuja. Good evening. Many thanks, Salamatu. Now, ahead of the two-day conference and exhibition of the traditional complementary and alternative medicine coming up Saturday, 4th June 2022, the First Lady of Nigeria, Aisha Buhari, has met with stakeholders and experts on CCAM to discuss strategies towards achieving targets of the program. State House correspondent Ali Kabir reports that the conference, which was interactive, focused on the need to put heads together towards promoting traditional medicine to exist side by side with the Western medicine. The program was championed by the Office of the First Lady of Nigeria in collaboration with the Federal Ministry of Health. Conventional medicine in many parts of the world. My intention, therefore, is to promote awareness on the importance of local hubs in healthcare. Not less than 85% of our people live in the rural areas. And the first one of all, when they have challenges with their health, is the traditional medicine. That's true. We have over 10,000 species of medicinal plants in Nigeria. We have not utilized 10%. Job and motivation for our people. The conference is expected to attract participants from the health sector, members of the academia, medical associations, indigenous exhibitors, as well as members of the diplomatic community. The First Lady was decorated as TCAM ambassador by the Minister of State for Health, alongside the rector TCAM, Zainab Ujudud Sharif. It's two weeks to the June 18th Equity Governorship and INEX has all its it's two weeks to the June 18th Equity Governorship election and INEC says all is now set for the exercise. INEC Chairman Professor Mahmoud Yakubu stated that the commission stated the commission's preparedness in a meeting with security agencies to ensure the election is hitch free. As the commission is getting ready for the Ikiti State Governorship election, we have also gone far with similar preparations for the Oshun State Governorship election holding next month, that is on Saturday, 16th July 2022. At the same time, the commission continues with preparations for the 2023 general election. The NAF therefore urge all excess members to breast off and be fully prepared to ensure that act capable of undermining the smooth conduct of elections are postponed. 
on the continuous voter registration exercise that will be suspended on the 30th of June, Mahmoud Yakubu notes that the queues are increasing and pleaded with security agencies for proper crowd control. However, in view of the surge, additional machines will be deployed to some of the most congested areas to ease the queues. Similarly, the resident electoral commissioners have been directed to liaise with the security agencies and stakeholders on the possibility of reopening some of the, some of the centers earlier closed because of insecurity. Meanwhile, INEC has released guidelines for the conduct of the 2023 general elections. A report just reaching us indicates that the chairman of the All Progressives Congress Presidential Screening Committee, John Odige Oyegun, says only 13 out of the 23 aspirants that appeared before the committee have been cleared. Sally Ugonara reports that while presenting the report of the Presidential Screening Committee to the national chairman, Oyegun urged the party not to be afraid to conduct a presidential primary. Now, a former Lagos State Governor and APC presidential aspirant Al Haji Ahmed Tunubu says the All Progressives Congress owes Nigeria the commitment's unity with a vision to transform the country. The presidential aspirant stated this when he visited another APC presidential aspirant and Cross River State Governor Professor Ben Ayade in Calabar. Paul Abel reports. Jagaban, as he is popularly called, Senator Ahmed Tinubu is catching on the opportunity of the few days to the presidential primaries to garner support from state delegates. The presidential aspirant describes Governor Yade as a viable heartbeat of the economic opportunity of the country. We must have that unity. We must work together for the economic development of our, of our nation. Governor Yadi, party and class affiliations stressed that Nigeria is in their need of change to positively transform the abundant natural resources. Then we can together, even though both having an aspiration for the same office, fly on the same plane, sit on the same chair, talk about our common interest, which is this country. Senator Tinimu also paid homage to the Obong of Calabar and interacted with delegates in the state. In Calabar, Paul Abel, NTA News. And a political support group known as the APC Door to Door Campaign Organization has appealed to the National Working Committee of the Governing All Progressives Congress, APC, to zone the party's presidential ticket to the northern part of the country. The organization says the party should be guided by the choice of the major opposition party and zone the presidency to the north for the sake of continuity, consolidation, and progress of the country. Not against zoning to south. But at this critical time of our nationhood, we must put national interests ahead of sectional interests. Microzoning to the northwest that has a block of votes is advisable at this material time. We call on our brothers from the south to see this call as a sacrifice to our fatherland. Let's have a political arrangement in place of zoning arrangement for the sake of our great party and our national development. The group added that the APC-led government has given every section of the country a fair representation and called for understanding and sacrifice for stability, inclusion and development. Long queues have resurfaced at pe many petrol stations across the FCT, leaving commuters and residents frustrated and sad over the developments. Awagimba, who went around the city centre, reports that some motorists say they have been on the queue for several hours. This was the action NTA observed in a visit to a filling station with commuters and motorists lamenting even with the long queues blocking the major highway. The plight of motorists in search of petrol from one filling station to another can better be imagined. Angry and tired motorists here say it has become a constant phenomenon 
and hardly a week passes without the resurfacing of wealth scarcity, a trend which they say does not augur well for the economy. Really, we don't know. If you ask anybody what's the problem, they will tell you, say, they don't know, they don't know. And day before yesterday, I take fuel here without any, any queue. But today, when I ask everybody, all the police stations in Abuja queue plenty. So many police stations, those are for the few that have for lot of lying. While the motorists wallow in pain and frustration, hawkers of the product seems to be making bricks business. Motorists, however, appeal to government and concerned authorities to help ease their suffering and ensure that the products are available. Have Wagimba NTA News. Strategic interventions that result in the progress recorded in tuberculosis, TB contact identification and treatment in the past three years are compiled in a document tagged Compendium of Tuberculosis Best Practices. Uche Guchku tells us about this book unveiled in Abuja. <laughs> Young and vibrant Joyce Agle was counting her days about one year ago due to unidentified TB infection. I had weight loss and I couldn't eat, night sweat. It went on as bleeding from the nose. Being active for lack of right treatments for over one year, she could have infected 10 to 15 persons according to the World Health Organization. Just Tuesday, I finished my Today, she is free from TB thanks to the dogged efforts of the National Tuberculosis, Burili Ulcer and Leprosy Control Program and its partners, which led to an increase of identified cases from 24% in 2018 to 45% in 2021. If we end the epidemic of tuberculosis in Nigeria, we must have solved 50% of the burden of tobacco lots in South Sahara Africa. All these strategies have been put together in this book for the benefits of other programs and countries still struggling with the sketch. That this compendium will be a useful tool for all stakeholders as we continue to scale up what worked well for us. Nigeria is expected to move from its sixth position in the world and reduce its estimated 156,000 TB deaths to the barest minimum. Uche Ugochuku, NTA News. Now, the Federal Capital Territory Administration has flagged off free eye surgery for cataract patients in Kwali Erie Council. Secretary for Health and Human Services Secretariat, Dr. Abubakar Safida, disclosed that 500 indigent patients are to benefit from the pilot scheme. Noze Yakobu tells us more. Cost as a result of the islands becoming too cloudy, making it difficult to see at night, which can lead to blindness. Medical experts believe that the clouded lens can be removed through surgery. It is against this background that the FCT administration, in collaboration with other development partners, is embarking on a free eye surgery for cataract patients at the Kwali General Hospital. This same procedure within Abuja is costing 100 and, uh, 150,000 to 200,000 naira. But we are provi providing it here free. And even when this exercise uh, uh, terminates, we intend to continue with this operations at highly subsidized price for people to come and benefit. The ESU of Kwali, who commends the FCT administration for extending the medical outreach to his domain, appeals that the gesture be sustained. The people of Kwali are happy today again for the presence of the kind of attention this administration is always giving to Kwali community. The development partners provided the consumables with the support of the FCT administration. Onoze Akubu, NTN. Instilled on health matters, as at 30th May 2022, two cases of monkeypox had been confirmed, with six other suspected cases reported in the FCT. Aisha Ubali brings us up to speed on the proactive steps towards tackling the zoonotic disease in the nation's capital city. 
World Health Organization, the effort has been from containing one epidemic to another. While countries are still battling with the COVID-19 virus, another public health challenge, monkeypox, is being contained in some countries around the world. As of 30th May 2022, 66 suspected cases with 21 deaths confirmed at the national scale. Yeah, and we know the source. We know how to prevent it. So if we avoid the, this coming into contact with uh, these rodents and uh, primates, which are the uh, natural host, uh, certainly you, you break the transmission. A zoonotic disease transmitted from animal to human, yes. then from human to human, according to yes. Dr. Sadiq Abdurrahman, human. has an incubation period of two to four days. This recent outbreak has seen about seven African countries affected, with over 100,000 cases reported, with emphasis on physical and environmental hygiene. Avoiding contact, especially with these strange animals, uh, they, they, they are starting, they are being hunted. Uh, killed for us for food, uh, hunted them for food, could they call them bushmeat, which is very popular delicacy. Dr. Sadiq debunked the alleged statement from some developed countries saying Nigeria has laboratories that could be a threat and also promoting the spread of the virus. The biological warfare emanating from lab, so maybe from the claims that it's been sponsored by from countries. Uh, that is far from the truth. While countries are on top of the game in containing this virus, World Health Organization, on the other hand, is working on monkeypox vaccine. In Abuja, Aisha Obali, NTA News. And Port Harcourt is where we go next on Nationwide with the Barbary as our guide. It's over to you. Me and welcome to Port Harcourt. The Nigerian Navy says it is reviewing its training curriculum with acquisition of more platforms to reposition the workforce towards responding appropriately to modern trends in warfare. Chief of Naval Staff Vice Admiral Awa Gambo stated this as the Nigerian Navy winds down activities marking its 66th anniversary. King's Lamaji reports. <laughs> The objective of this two-day sea exercise is intended to forge a regional cooperation amongst Gulf of Guinea nations for enhanced environment for economic activities to thrive. We have to go to sea to tackle the maritime insecurity. It's great to see and um, showcase their capabilities. Um, we're impressed with, with what the Nigerian Navy and the Special Boat Service can do. For the Chief of Naval Staff, the 66th anniversary of the Nigerian Navy cutting across simulation exercise, sports and lectures are all intended to building mental, physical and professional competence of the Nigerian Naval personnel. We have endeavored to accomplish this in the past decade, let's fight tomorrow's conference. The reality on ground will suggest that we cannot rest on our own. Those who contributed to the successes recorded over the years were equally rewarded after the ceremonial sunset in Port Harcourt, Kingsley Amajuri, NTA News. Health experts are again calling on Nigerians to maintain healthy lifestyles and the traditional washing of hands as the country records 21 cases of monkeypox. Clement Barico reports on the needs to create more awareness among residents of Rio on the virus. Actually, I've heard of I've heard of that, but on radio and television recently. When I was a kid, I used to hear of monkeypox by then, but uh, of recent, I'm not hearing much. Have you heard of monkeypox? That is the first time I hear that one. Oh. I've not heard of it before. This is my first time I'm hearing it. 
These responses further explain the need for relevant authorities to step up their games in the fight against monkeypox that is recently resurfacing in parts of the country. As of May 29, 2022, a total of 21 confirmed cases with one death have been reported from nine states and the FCT. Fever, tears, body ache. Of course, my looks at malaria, but this one has rashes that accompany other malaria symptoms. If you see those things around your environment, please report. Good news for now, if you cannot cook it properly, don't even try it. Though confirmed cases are still low, health experts say maintaining good personal hygiene and proper cooking of one of Nigeria's delicacies, the bush meat, before consumption, remain key to keeping the virus at bay. In Uyo, Clement Barakui, NTA News. We are done here. Sadia in Sokoto will give us the next set of stories, but that will be right after the break. Good evening. To have you join us in Sokoto. The Chief of the Army Staff, Lieutenant General Baruk Yahaya, says social media is crucial in sharing public opinion, hence the need for users to enhance their daily posts with objectivity. The Army Chief was speaking at the 20th edition of Social Media Influencers Seminar on Civil-Military Relations. Sheo Muhammad Detti reports. The Nigeria Army's non-kinetic lines of operation, critical roles of the social media, the theme of the 20th edition of Social Media Influencer Seminar on Civil Military Relations. Chief of the Army Staff, Lieutenant General Paruku Yahya, represented, says the seminar provides an opportunity to interact, share experience, and get the needed feedback on how best the Army can serve the nation. Though crucial to nation building, social media also serves as an avenue where many negative impacts can manifest in the country. The coming together of social media influencers, bloggers, students, and other professional bodies is expected to change the narrative of fake news circulation. Jennifer Rukuihaya believes that social media plays an important role in bringing lasting peace. Policies are also sent to armed forces, Nigerian army unit and formation so that they can be disseminated to all our troops. And those that disregard these instructions will talk to them, we call them, we sanction them. Austin Peacemaker identified fake news on the social media as devastating, capable of rising unnecessary tension. But this is a way of us voicing ourselves. So for me, I would say even when we are going to regulate, we should look at the paragraph by paragraph. I ensure that you are not trying to shut us down. Papers on harnessing the influence of social media in showcasing the Nigerian Army Civil Military Cooperation, Baratanas Dania, and Civil Military Cooperation as a variable tool for improving the image of the army and perception management by Major General Aribi were presented. In Sokoto, Show Muhammad Dati, NTA News. As the world celebrates Bicycle Day, stakeholders in Sokoto have conversed for the use of bicycle to reduce smoke emission and improve human health. Show Muhammad Dati examines the significance of bicycle and challenges. Saturday of June area We sincerely apologize for that technical hitch from Sokoto. Now, good news reaching Nigeria is that Nigeria has just been re-elected into the executive board of the African Union of Broadcasting, AUB. In other news, the Japanese government is considering deploying its expertise in training victims of insurgency in northeast Nigeria in agriculture and automobile repairs for recovery and economic rejuvenation of the region. Japanese ambassador to Nigeria, Masunaga Kazuyoshi, stated this when he paid a courtesy visit to the office of the Northeast Development Commission in Abuja. Ilyasu Yakubu reports. 
over a decade, the Northeast region has been battling with insurgency. The federal government under President Muhammad Buhari has been making frantic efforts to end the war. With the establishment of the Northeast Development Commission with a mandate to execute the master plan, this meeting with the Japanese ambassador and the commission is one out of many engagements in a bid to provide support for the total recovery of the Northeast. Uh, the embassy and the, uh, the JICA will continue to support your activity based on your uh, roadmap and the master plan. The ambassador said Japanese International Cooperation Agency, JICA, will take charge of the agricultural training while Toyota and Honda companies will handle the automobile repairs training. Managing Director of the Commission, Mohamed Goni Al-Kali, thanked the Japanese government for the support. And we are going to create the necessary trust and confidence to ensure that this relationship between the Commission and the Japanese Embassy in JICA, by extension, the Japanese government would yield the results required for the development and the empowerment of people of the North region. The Japanese government is also providing 50,000 makeshift toilet to minimize open defecation to improve the health of the people. In Abuja, Ilyasu Yakubu, NTA News. And as efforts are being intensified to totally decimate Boko Haram and ISWAP terrorists, about 4,000 insurgents have recently surrendered to troops of Multinational Joint Task Force in the Lake Chad area. First Commander Multinational Joint Task Force Major General Abdul Khalifa Ibrahim disclosed these and other key achievements in the World Press Conference held at the Force Headquarters in Jemena, Republic of Chad. Memuna Garba reports. It was an hour journey from Meduguri, the Borno State capital, to N'Djamena, the capital of Chad Republic, where the Force Commander Multinational Joint Tax Force Major General Abdul Khalifa Ibrahim highlighted activities of the force and recent successes recorded on the fringes of the Lake Chad. Improved security as a result of sustained offensive against the terrorists has paved way for free movement and sustenance of relocation of displaced people to their places of abode across the Lake Chad region. The ongoing Operation Lake Sanity has recorded tremendous successes where more than 800 terrorists were neutralized in addition to rescue of 3,000 captives, destruction of enclaves and recovery of terrorist logistics and weapons among others. Chadian uh, contingent and the Nigerian contingent that was Kangawa are uh, thrusting into the tumbus and we shall continue as long as we can until we clear them. The force is currently collaborating with security agencies on how to apprehend fleeing terrorists due to the intensity of the ongoing Operation Lake Sanity to calm the general area of the Lake Chat region. We want to use this opportunity to call on them, the Boko Haram, the Iswap who are in the bush, to abandon that futile cause and surrender. Major General Abdul Khalifa Ibrahim warned collaborators of insurgents to desist from their ungodly acts. The MNJTF has stepped up operations to clear up marauding terrorists from the shores of the Lake Chad region for full restoration of social economic activities. From Jemena Chad, Memuna Garba, NTA News. The group Mayeti Allah Khawtal Hori, a Fulani social cultural association, is taking more concrete steps in providing alternatives towards quelling community security challenges in the country. Abdullahi Musa Salija reports that, for a start, the group has hosted an interactive policy dialogue here in Abuja. Current threats to internet security in Nigeria are vast. The farmer's hardest clash in northwest, north central, and part of southeast. Banditry and kidnapping in the south, south, and south east, as well as other criminal activities sweeping across the country. The Miyati Allah Kautal Hori, a full and social group, feel it has an obligation to assemble professionals and prominent people to discuss these issues. The idea is to provide solutions to national security challenges and correct associated misconceptions about full and ease, and they have been generally profiled as complicit in some Nigerians' internal security challenges. To give more credence to the project, there are kings from almost all African countries, serving and former governors of Fulani extraction are in attendance. The future of Fulani pastoralists in Nigeria is central in this struggle. Sharing the experience is very, very important. This is a dialogue, not a monologue. And understandably, 
has summarized, we have lost control of our youth. There's a need for us to rejig the traditional leadership system, the judicial system, and then the security system at the local level. As he communicates the expected at the end of the dialogue, the nation awaits to see how the group navigates to get Fulani nation out of the Kogmaya. Musa Suleja, NTA. And the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia says arrangements for the year 2022 Hajj have been completed and all pilgrim sites are ready to receive pilgrims. Ministry of Hajj in a statement says one million pilgrims are expected to perform the Hajj exercise. Those to be permitted according to the statements are pilgrims that are not above 65 years old. Other requirements are complete immunization with the COVID-19 vaccines approved by the Kingdom's Ministry of Health and this includes negative PCR test for COVID-19 within 72 hours before the purchase time to the kingdom. The civil aviation also announced that regular measures will be taken against the violators and they will be held responsible for breaking any violation. And this is where we come to the end of Nationwide for today. We thank you for watching. Remember to join the NCA in its campaign against rape and rapists. I'm Lami Ali. Have a good weekend.